Hey fans, what's up? This is Gamer Guy Seminasis, and to start off my third season, I'm interviewing a very special person. Quite frankly, he's amazing. He's Roger King, and you can find him on Crazy Roger King on YouTube. He's a Spider-Man fan film director. So, how are you doing, Roger? I'm doing good. How you doing? Doing good myself. So, uh, what made you interested in film directing? Well, um, it's not that... Nothing really made me, like, one day think, I want to be a director. It was just more, I want to be Spider-Man. And I knew that I had very limited resources and people and uh, experience and anything like that. So ultimately, I had to become a director. I've always been a, I've played in bands. I've played music pretty much about 12 years. Um, and I was always the, the writer of the songs, the singer, kind of the front man, if you want to call it that. Cool. But I always kind of directed traffic with that. Like, I need this like that. I want this like this. So I, it was in my blood already. I already had experience with, like, this is what I want. Let's make this happen. Yeah. So it was just, it, it was easy. It's just what I had to do to make it happen, you know? Nice. All right, uh, question number two. Why did you choose Spider-Man over other easier superheroes to portray, like Batman? Um... I, I don't want to be Batman. I like <laughs> Batman. I just don't want to be him. Punisher, Wolverine. I wouldn't mind being Wolverine. Yeah. Um, but Spider-Man is... That's my character. You know, I knew it was going to yeah. be a lot of work. Uh, something like the Punisher. Or someone that's simpler. Yeah, I would get myself out there. But I didn't know if this was going to be a one-time thing. I just... I wanted to be Spider-Man. I wanted to see myself as Spider-Man. I wanted to do what Spidey does. Yeah, because he's so, like everyone. You know, like Spider-Man can be anyone and... Yeah, and, and it's easy because I relate to it more, so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Same same exact answer there, too, for my part. It's like, I just, I, I felt a connection. I've been reading Spider-Man, watched even, like, the old television show. Like, yeah. As a young little kid, it blew me away, seeing the yeah. bright red and blue costume out in the on the buildings. It's just, you know, I've been, I've wanted to be him my whole life. Yeah, <laughs> same here. <laughs> All right. Also, um, were the fan films supposed to be reinterpretation of the Sam Raimi films, or just a faithful adaptation to the comics? Comics. I'm a big comic reader. I, I, yeah. I still collect. You know, I have tons of them. I have all the old spectaculars. I have a lot of the Amazings. Uh, mm -hmm. All the other little ones that came and went. Uh, so it was just kind of like a ensemble of a lot of different Spider-Man comic book runs. I didn't want to re redo something that's already been done scene yeah. for scene. Because then especially, you know, Hollywood has a production. Uh, mine's obviously going to be looked at as complete garbage. <laughs> not to me, but... <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Low production. And so, no, I, I, I've never played anyone else's songs. I've never done cover songs. I always write my own songs, so I always wanted to yeah. do my own world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always good. All right, also, um, like, why, why only six issues? Like, will there be more films in the future? Uh, I don't know. It was a lot of work. I mean, I, I never even planned six issues. Like, on some of the, on, on my YouTube channel, the Crazy Roger King, on one, one episode I talked about, you know, it was supposed to be a three to five minute trailer. Oh, okay. It became a six hour film series. Like, I just, I kept, it kept progressing and growing. Um, oh, I got myself doing the webs. What if I could do this? Oh, I, I figured that out. What if I could do that? It was just years of that building up and not, kind of an addiction, not wanting to stop and wanting to keep pushing myself to get to that next level of what I can try and do. Cool. Yeah. All right. And also, um, I, I, I always want to know, how much did it cost you to make these films? It didn't cost much. I mean, it was basically what whatever I had in my pocket to throw out that day. Some I might spend like maybe 60 to 50 to 80 bucks a week. So it's mainly paint, duct tape, uh, maybe a sheet of, of uh, something or a little bit of fabric. Yeah. I found the costumes extremely cheap. You know, the body suits, it's like three yeah. bucks, you know? You, know? Yeah. Uh, you just mix them together. It's just everything was like rock bottom, do it yourself style. Yeah. Uh, spend as little as possible to get the most out of out of the materials that you have, so. Cool. so I, I, what's that? Oh, cool, because at first I was thinking, like, you got the costume from, like, you know, a Halloween store? But I was like, no. <laughs> no, everything was made. Um, cool. I didn't do it to where someone's like, oh, I saw that costume at the store the other last Halloween. <laughs> it's the exact same one. I wanted everything to be original. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah. And one kind. Yeah. All right, yeah. next question. Um, 
And next question, uh, like, like, how were you able to hire people like model Heather Bryson and others for the film? Uh, I just did what I do and just used my mouth to get people to do what I needed them to do. Nice. <laughs> Heather was my my brother's girlfriend at the time. Oh. And I, Buying, finding a, a Mary Jane that kind of locked into that visual mm -hmm. of what Mary Jane kind of should be, based in my mind. So, uh, yeah. yeah, she was young. She was she was ready. People will do anything if you tell them. I, I, I'll give you a part in the movie, and they don't. <laughs> care. Just filming. It's like a tiny little production. They're just like, okay. So I've had people hand me keys for their warehouses for their offices, these professional people, just because I told them, Wow. <laughs> I'll give you a little part, and it's like, okay, here's the key. You, you can only use it for the next week, but it's okay. And I'm just, <laughs> I could rip this guy off, you know? Strangers would come in there. I, I could, what if I was a killer? Like, they, it's just, <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it, it blew my mind. All yeah. you gotta do is, I'll give you a little roll, and then yeah. everyone Hollywood in their mind, like, oh, this is my chance, you know. Cool. And by the way, we're not encouraging anyone to do any like devious plans, just you know. <laughs> yeah. But it works sometimes. It wasn't yeah. even, but you know. Yeah, that's cool. All right, next <laughs> question: How are you able to direct and act at the same time? Um, I don't know if I I pulled it off well. I tried. It was very hard. As you're acting, all you're doing. I'm saying the words that I know I'm supposed to say. I'm doing what I know, but you're thinking, is the camera right? Is this right? Is she going to say her line? Is this guy going to punch me right? Am I going to do it? The whole time, your mind is just multitasking. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you look at the footage, you're like, I did my best, man. I had eight <laughs> things in my head. I don't even know if I said the words right, but I'm surprised it came out properly. It was pretty much that through the whole production. Cool. Okay, also, what is Bag and Board Productions all about? And do you plan on making it big with directing? Um, well, Bag and Board Productions, I just wanted a name um, to have to kind of show that, like, Bag and Board Productions, it's just, you know, Bag and Board, comic books going to Bag and Board. I wanted people to understand that's a comic book uh, backed operation. It was just me, but I just wanted something. I didn't want it. Roger King Productions, I just wanted to seem something a little bit outside of Roger King and myself to where then yeah. maybe when I'm giving cards out to people at Comic-Con and I'm trying to talk to and schmooze certain people, mm -hmm. um, they think it's a little larger than life. Then, oh, Roger King, oh, I'm Roger King. Here's my Roger King card. It's, <laughs> oh, back productions. It's a little larger than life. So that's all it was. It, it was it basically, it gave me something to put at the beginning of all the movies. I haven't oh. really done other than that. Oh, uh, I think that's a smart marketing move, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I really go to comic-con and i would work it man and like pass out thousands and thousands of flyers my whole reason to be there was to push the series and get people to watch it and oh, so cool. yeah all right next question what what advice do you have for aspiring directors um <sighs> tell people what you want them to do until you're satisfied yeah now, yeah no matter how tired when you start to get tired take a break because that's when you start going oh it's good enough oh it's good enough and then you're going to watch all these hours of footage and it's crap and then you're like okay we have to do all this stuff over so always going fresh um if you have to do one take like 60 times until it's this what you want or what you're hearing everything's perfect do it you know it's yeah. much it's much better to to tell people what you want and be bold about it than kind of uh walk on eggshells and be a little careful because then you don't get what you want so just push it to make it because it's your project you're the director mm -hmm. um have, have be ballsy about it i guess you know yeah yeah well said you know <laughs> all right next question what do you think about the raimi spider-man trilogy in general and your what's your favorite least favorite film from uh, the, that trilogy of films um well the new the the new, are you talking about the new Amazing Spider-Man? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll get to that later. But I was talking about the the old trilogy Spider-Man. Like, what do you think about them in general? Uh, uh, I mean, at the time, it's all all we got. You yeah. know, it's all available. Hey, this is what Hollywood's giving us. So it's like, oh, cool. You know, but then you look back on it, like when the first Spider-Man came out, I was like blown away. Like, bam! Yeah, I was just... twelve. I thought it was the best thing ever. You know, when it came out. Oh yeah, and now you look back on it, you're like, well, the Green Goblin looked like a Power Ranger. Like, what was that? And then yeah. this, I, I like the second one. I thought the second one was pretty awesome. Doc Ock did a good good job there. And yeah, I still think it's slightly uh, the second one's still slightly like better than the new Spider-Man. 
but th th that's all I'll give about the R Raimi films. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, the third one, I was just excited. Yeah. Venom, Sandman, I like them. So in the movie, like that stupid uh, dancing scene and all this, yeah. I, it was just, I didn't even care. I was just like, oh, Venom, look, Venom, Venom open his mouth and you see his teeth, you know? Yeah. <laughs> about but then as soon as but now you're just like man what happened there were some cool venom shots you know where they're falling and he's fighting and he's like like rah, like the dinosaur style like yeah. raptor on. that was that was cool and you think about that but um then there's so many parts that you don't like yeah but yeah i mean it, it was what was available to us and to me and i liked it at the time it did the job um it goes in history and now we've moved on you know yeah all right, well, yeah, I've already watched your video about Amazing Spider-Man, so we'll move on to the next question. And, um, okay, who portrayed Peter Parker the best, in your opinion, Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield? Uh, I, I liked Andrew Garfield a lot. That was really good. Um, I would say Andrew Garfield. You know, yeah. it was more of a real world, like, today. Like, for me, you know, I'm 33. Nerds weren't, like, if you were, like, the Andrew Garfield character when I was growing up, at my school experiences was more like the stoners, like the guy that actually did some drugs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How he seemed like really troubled, this and that, like no mm -hmm. one cared about him and that. Um, but then the nerds were really more, I guess more so like, not even the Tobey Maguire, they're just like hardcore, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I guess the, like the obvious nerds, but um, things have changed. I guess things are different. Um, styles have changed so yeah. I can can I understand you know it's like that uh it's that show where the nerd gets the good good looking girlfriend or whatever I, I don't know <laughs> there's a lot of shows and movies like this change like nerds have kind of taken over I think someone commented about that and it, it makes sense you know yeah uh, yeah Andrew Garfield I like his portrayal a lot mm -hmm. all right and also of all the four films what's your favorite villain and least favorite villain uh I would let's just say Venom, I guess, just for those cool shots, you know, at, towards okay. the end, part three when they're actually fighting and the symbiote's going crazy and the symbiote gets huge on him. Like, I would say. Cool. All right. And also, what would you like to see more of in the Amazing Spider-Man Two? As far as Amazing Spider-Man Two, I don't know. I I I don't really. Whatever they give me, I'm probably gonna be pretty happy with. You know, yeah. I, I would like to see just more cool stuff. You know, more stuff. Awesome. Uh, last one is, uh, well, this is a fan question from Mega Man NG, and uh, so a small shout out to him. Um, he said, what are your thoughts on that controversial comic book crossover, One More Day? Well, I liked One More Day. You know, Joe Quesada, I'm pretty sure Joe Quesada was the artist. It was a pretty cool storyline, but I just didn't like the way it ended, and then it went off into Brand New Day, this huge, long thing. I... I wasn't into Brandy Day, but I, I liked One More Day. It could have been a cool, short, lived, kind of different story, you know, where things kind of, he had these choices, and yeah. I thought it could have been pretty good if they just kept it at that, and then everything kind of, I'm old, I'm set in my ways, you know, I kind of like the things the way they just were. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't like where it went, what it led to. Um, but I liked that storyline. I thought that was a great storyline. You know, Joe Casas is my favorite artist. Um, cool. I thought it was, you know, it just yeah. it just got a little out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. All right, guys. So well, that wraps it up for this interview. So I'd like to thank you a lot, Roger King, for joining me for this. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> thanks and, and have a great day, guys. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right.